Well, very pleased to have with us Alexa Fritz, NRA ILA media liaison, joining us tonight for the ILA Report. Alexa, thank you for taking a couple minutes out of uh, what I think are going to be very busy days, pretty much from now through Election Day at the very least. Oh, not a problem, but yes, they are very busy days, making a lot of endorsements and uh, a lot of news coming out of this department. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, you know, and let's remind folks, uh, NRAPVF.org uh, is a place that uh, gun owners should be checking, I think, almost every day now, because as you say, uh, since primary season is, is over for the most part, there are a couple states out there that still have uh, their primaries. Uh, they'll, they'll be done uh, in the next week or two. Uh, and NRA's uh, Political Victory Fund, you guys are making a, a, just a ton of endorsements uh, every day. So to keep up, best way to do it is to go to NRAPVF.org, right? That's exactly right. Uh, go to that website, NRAPVF.org. In the top right corner, it says Latest News, and you'll see a list of the endorsements that we put out um, today and in the last couple days. You can click at the bottom of that section for more news, and it'll have all the endorsements that we've written uh, in the past several months. So um, it's definitely a good way to stay connected and find out who we um, who we recommend that will support your gun rights. And some uh, some big endorsements today. I know that uh, down deep in the heart of Texas, uh, uh, Chris Cox was there for an event with uh, Texas Governor Rick Perry uh, and uh, the NRA's Political Victory Fund making that endorsement today. That's right. That's absolutely right. Yeah, Chris was in Dallas uh, with the governor and uh, uh, announced at a big event there at a gun shop that um, we are in fact uh, endorsing Governor Rick Perry. Once again, he's um, just a, a staunch supporter of, of gun rights for Texans. And being a Texan myself, um, I know what a great governor he's been and, and how good he is to gun owners and, and how much um, it means to him uh, personally as well to support the Second Amendment. So uh, we definitely throw our support towards him in return. You know, I, I got to say, uh, this this is not a surprising endorsement uh, for, for me and for folks who right. uh, are paying attention. Uh, it, you will remember uh, it was, I think, earlier this year, uh, Governor Perry was out jogging uh, with his dog when his dog was attacked by a coyote and the uh, good governor dispatched that coyote with the help of his uh, Ruger, I believe uh, it was, with his Crimson Trace grips. Seriously, how awesome is our governor? <laughs> <laughs> Does it get much better than that? I mean, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Me meanwhile, his opponent, uh, the former mayor of Houston, Bill White, and a former member of Mayors Against Illegal Guns, not a uh, not a surprise them, I mean, but a, a clear contrast between the yeah. uh, two candidates for governor. Yeah, there is a clear contrast there. Yes, um, Bill White, as you said, was was once a member of uh, Mayors Against Illegal Guns and um, is not somebody that uh, that we think would be a good choice for gun owners. All right. Uh, now, a couple of other endorsements uh, that we should mention as well. Uh, in New Jersey, uh, NRA's Political Victory Fund endorsing John Runyon for, uh, for Congress. That's right, and he's an AQ, um, which means that um, he, he's gotten that rating by filling out a, a perfect questionnaire with us. We have uh, all the faith in him that he'll be um, a great person to, uh, to be in that, um, that House seat in the 3rd Congressional District there and that he will support the Second Amendment and uh, gun owners there as well as across the country. Yeah, I don't usually root for uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, but uh, John <laughs> running a former Eagle, I'll root for this guy uh, so we can get some, uh, some good pro-gun legislators in uh, New Jersey. Uh, and, you know, Rob Portman uh, also endorsed uh, in the Ohio Senate race there uh, by the NRA's Political Victory Fund. That's absolutely right. Rob Portman has uh, an A rating with the NRA, and he is now NRA um, PVF endorsed. And uh, we certainly do hope that, that folks there in Ohio will vote him um, into, the, into the U.S. Senate. Um, and, uh, I mean, he's certainly been somebody... He, he just has an outstanding record, um, and he's certainly somebody that we can trust with our with our Second Amendment freedoms. So uh, we hope that they will um, go ahead and vote for Rob Portman. And uh, also in um, in Missouri, in the fourth congressional district, we've made an endorsement there for Ike Skelton in the House. And uh, again, we hope that gun owners on November second in Missouri will get out and uh, and and vote for Ike Ike Skelton. He um, 
also has an outstanding record with us, is also uh, A-rated by the NRA PBF. All right. Uh, and a couple of other uh, uh, non-election related issues to uh, talk about as well. Uh, I think probably the, the, the one that I want to get started with, uh, Alexa, the FBI released the crime statistics for 2009 earlier this week. And, you know, last year we saw gun sales soar. Uh, in fact, it's kind of a joke among a lot of gun store owners that uh, President Obama should be named a salesman of the year. Right. We also saw violent crime drop to its lowest level uh, in over 36 years. Uh, the homicide rate is at its lowest in 45 years. The idea that uh, more guns equals more crime, that idea that the uh, Brady campaign and gun control advocates uh, constantly float out there, proven uh, wrong once again, uh, simply by virtue of the fact we had you know, more guns in the hands of uh, private citizens than uh, ever before last year, and the crime rate plummeted. Right, right. You're absolutely right. Um, again, you know, more guns uh, equals less crime, and we're seeing that. Once again, um, the statistics don't lie. Uh, they're there on our website um, for you to check out. And these are statistics from the FBI. We don't make our own statistics. We, um, we get our stats from the FBI and from the Justice Department. And this report out um, this week says that uh, once again in 2009, which was a record year for gun sales, um, I believe the number of, of guns that Americans own has risen by something like 90 million. Uh, so there are more guns than ever out there, and yet the crime rate continues to fall. And that's great news. And uh, it says a lot about um, about our Second Amendment freedoms and, and what it means to protect yourself and, and how perhaps criminals act accordingly when they know that more people are armed. Absolutely. You know, we were just talking about a... Uh... Story last night out of Brooklyn, New York, an armed citizen story. And, you know, I'm guessing a lot of criminals in the New York City area don't even worry about the uh, possibility of being confronted by an armed homeowner. So these two guys broke into a, uh, a home middle of the night. Uh, they were armed. I think one of them had a starter pistol. The other had a, uh, uh, a toy machine gun. They weren't counting on the fact that the uh, homeowner there had a legally owned uh, a pistol that was a real Firearm. One of the uh, burglars uh, uh, shot and wounded. The other one took off. The, uh, I believe, 58-year-old uh, former guidance counselor uh, and teacher is is alive and well today, thanks to the fact that he had a firearm. And I was I was pleasantly surprised, Alexa, to see in the comments in the uh, news story that I uh, saw so many of his neighbors saying, "I'm glad he had a gun in Brooklyn, New York." And I hope Mayor Bloomberg read that story. <laughs> So that he yeah. can understand, you know what, people want to be able to protect themselves. Yeah, they do. And, and obviously, like you just said, those people were happy that their neighbor was able to do so. I mean, why, why wouldn't they be? You know? yeah. um, we want to be able to protect ourselves. We want our friends and family and loved ones to be able to protect themselves, too. And um, that is a great story. I'm glad that homeowner is, is doing okay today. Uh, I am, too. You know, But it, it's interesting because at the same time, we still have... Uh, politicians out there who are trying to make it more difficult for people to protect themselves in uh, Michigan, uh, Royal Oak, Michigan. The city commission there is asking lawmakers to amend uh, state law, in essence, to make a uh, local four-day festival a gun-free zone, uh, as if that will, you know, keep the criminals uh, away. Right. They should just have a criminal-free zone, don't you think? Make it easier. That, they could go ahead and pass that law, right, to say, criminals, yeah. <laughs> you're not allowed to commit any crimes here. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we would definitely not be in favor of something like that. Um, a gun-free zone doesn't mean anything except to those of us that follow the law. So, obviously, criminals, if they want to bring a gun and they're intent on doing somebody at that festival harm, they're still going to bring their gun, even if this law gets changed. It's not going to stop them. It's not going to slow them down. However, um, if they do, in fact, um, carry on and, and see, th see to it that guns are banned at this event, then, you know, us law-abiding citizens uh, that show up will, will not be armed and will not have a chance to defend themselves if something does happen. So um, it, it's just... You know, it's ridiculous. Concealed carry has worked. It's been successful everywhere it's been tried. And we see no reason to take a step back as far as gun rights for law-abiding 
license holders, um, you know, where, where that is concerned. So, yeah, absolutely. All right. And one final uh, topic here before we let you go, Alexa, uh, in Nevada, speaking of right to carry coming up later this month, a uh, very, uh, I think a very important form and a, a great chance for uh, concealed carry holders to uh, to talk to uh, local sheriffs, the issuing authorities about the concealed carry uh, process, right? A right to carry form coming up. Yeah, that's right. It's the Nevada Sheriffs and Chiefs Association that's hosting its annual Nevada Carry uh, Concealed Weapon Permit Holders Forum. And that's September 30th, which is two weeks from t- today, uh, starts at 9 a.m. and runs till about noon in uh, Carson City, Nevada. And um, we definitely would encourage our members to go if they can. It's a good time to uh, raise any questions or concerns that, that they might have about the, um, the permitting process and, um, and make their voices heard. Um, that meeting I hear is also going to be broadcast um, on the Nevada legislature's website. And uh, we have links to all these stories again, by the way. At, at, um, on our website, nraila.org, so you can click around and, and find the link there. If you're not able to attend yourself, you can watch that meeting um, on the legislature's website. And I see that actually it says you can even go ahead and submit some questions beforehand um, through a link on that website, too. So All definitely right. something to be aware of and, and go and make your voice heard. Absolutely. Hey, Alexa, thank you so much for uh, joining us this afternoon. I know that uh, you've got more work to do, but we'll talk to you again very soon. (laughs) All right. Thanks so much, Cam. Good to be with you. Thank you. Alexa Fritz, NRA ILA Media Liaison, getting back to the uh, candidate grades and endorsements. We'll be talking again with Alexa and the uh, folks at NRA ILA for the ILA Report next Thursday as well.